Is this the end of the Apple Card? Here we'll discuss what had happened and we'll talk about two new travel credit cards that have just been announced. Apple announced that it would be ending its relationship with Goldman Sachs within the next 12 to 15 months. The two companies had linked up to release the Apple Card and a high yield savings account. This was announced at the end of November and it would mark the end of a relationship with a big bank and a tech company. This card had first been announced in 2019 and ever since then it's been bleeding cash. Since 2020, the card has lost a staggering $3 billion. If you look at the card itself, it earns 3% cash back on Apple purchases and this includes Apple Pay and 2% back on everything else with no annual fee. So this card makes sense for a lot of people and many people applied. What ended up happening with this card is that most likely they ended up approving too many unqualified applicants who are at high risk of defaulting on their payments. This left the profits of their products bleeding cash left and right for many years. This pair also launched a high yield savings account at 4.15%, which is below market value, but was financially successful, unlike the Apple card. The high yield savings account from Apple is decent but far from being the best. Anyway, back to the card. A potential company in the space that may take over is American Express, which is interesting. The phenomenal customer service at American Express combined with the resources and fluid ecosystem at Apple makes these two a winning pair in my opinion. So I think these two companies coming together would work out very well. And another name that has been floating around is Synchrony, which is a financial company that has its hand in many co-branded store credit cards. They tend to cater toward customers with lower credit scores, so I don't know how much of a good fit this would be. But they have been around for a while with many different credit cards, including Amazon. Wells Fargo files for trademarks for two new credit cards, the Autograph Beyond and the Autograph Journey card. These filings are usually done when banks plan on launching new credit cards. And it looks like these two will be geared towards travel, and I'll explain why in a second. The Journey card is rumored by a doctor of credit to have an annual fee of $95 and a sign-up offer of 60,000 points after $4,000 of spend within the first four months. As for rumors on the spend multipliers, 3X on a large number of categories such as entertainment, dining, gas, phone, and travel. Very similar to the current no annual fee autograph card by Wells Fargo. No rumors yet on the Beyond card. However, there is speculation that this may be their premium travel credit card with a big annual fee like the Platinum Reserve Venture X. So between the 395 to 695 annual fee range. Wells Fargo did not confirm the points earning structure at launch. However, they did say that it would be more lucrative than the current autograph card, which means you can see more categories added or higher spend multipliers than 3X. So you might have a 4X category, for example. The most interesting part about these cards is that they're adding transfer partners. And we all know you can get more value from transfer partners than cash back alone. As far as to which transfer partners, it's still in speculation. The current transfer partners from Built would be amazing, but I don't know how feasible that would be. They might have issues with profitability there, but those partners would be amazing. You can speculate that some of the existing credit card partners may be added on as a transfer partner. So Choice Hotel, for example, as they have a co-branded hotel credit card with that chain but we really don't know at this point we would have to wait until early of 2024 what do you think about the apple card moving forward and the two new travel credit cards coming out let me know in the comment section and i'll catch everyone next time